Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today I'm going to show you a Notebook Gold feature from Windows 2012 and R2, Nick Teaming. So first what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use my uh, two servers, uh, 2012 R2 servers that I have and I'm going to use them for this scenario and what I did here is um, I've added uh, two network cards and as this is a virtual machine uh, in most cases you will have for example a physical machine that you have uh, two or more um, NICs that you can configure in the teaming or you can use even virtual machines to create NIC teaming on them as well but uh, the most important thing is to think about the redundancy um, for example if you have uh, two network cards this is the simplest scenario and you have two network cards and you configure them as a team and you are good to go with uh, for example a single uh, network card failing you will have redundancy uh, but if both network cards are connected to your switch to a single switch you need to think about that because um, after all um, if they are connected to a single switch uh, if that switch fails um, your connection will still uh, fail to the server so there are multiple scenarios where you can uh, find redundancy but uh, as uh, you can think of, the NIC teaming is primarily, con primarily configured and was designed by Microsoft for redundancy and uh, uh, in case of disaster recovery like failing uh, uh, NIC, um, it can help you uh, with your production to stay up and running. So let me show you, I have my local server here and in here you can see that I have two um, network adapters that are currently taking a DHCP address and um, right above them you will see the NIC teaming feature that is currently disabled so um, the best way to do it and the fastest is to use the server manager Microsoft uh, made uh, this so it can ease us ease the administrator work and uh, do it with less administrator um, uh, interaction so um, do things so as you can see I have my tunics and I have a virtual uh, network um, virtual switch that uh, it's configured for my uh, virtual machines which I'm not going to use in this scenario so um, you can see this is the Nick teaming um, wizard and interface that I'm going to use to create my team and uh, if I click on the task right here I will have the option to add to, to new team or add uh, to selected team um, if you for example have a currently installed team um, you can add additional network cards if you uh, install um, physically on the server or add uh, virtual NICs to, to a server uh, on a later state of course you can disable or proper open the properties for for this and this will open basically the um, some information about the um, the um, NIC that you are looking at. So I have the two NICs right here uh, I will highlight them and if I right click again I will have the option to add to new team. So I will click to add to new team and the first thing that you need to do is you need to uh, name your team. So I'm going to name that NIC team uh, I'm not really creative with the names, so <laughs> you can you can name it whatever you like, and um, you can you can name this so you will know where or uh, where is connected and uh, what will happen if this fails, for example, or something like that. That will fit your environment. So in here you have the tick box options to add the network cards to a team and if you click on the additional properties you have some additional properties to configure for the teaming so let's start with the teaming mode um, there are a lot of discussions about the teaming mode and which mode uh, should you uh, select and actually depends on your environment uh, it really depends 
for uh, the simplest method to do it, uh, the teaming mode, um, I can say that it's the uh, switch independent mode. Uh, that means that uh, the current team on your server is not dependent on the switch uh, that you are using to connect to your environment and that will um, work with most of the uh, inexpensive switches of course and uh, no configuration is required on the switch. Um, the other two methods on the other hand require configuration on the switches and uh, these are the static teaming and the LACP. Um, if you want to know more information about them, you can uh, go ahead and search on TechNet about explanation about how to configure them. Because uh, basically what will this do, for example, the static teaming is uh, when you select this option, the first the switch needs to support um, um, this this method it needs to support uh, different protocols um, actually in this in this method uh, um, selected and uh, you will need to configure the switch um, so that it will basically the switch will route the traffic and the switch will um, create the load balancing method not the um, nick teaming on your windows server in this case if you select the static teaming or LACP, um, the windows will not be involved in um, the load balance, instead it will just uh, uh, receive and send package to the switch and the, the switch will decide how to um, load balance the traffic, the inbound and outbound traffic. So uh, in this case I'm going to use the switch independent mode because as I said it's the easiest one and the next load balancing mode um, from 2012 we had only two options, the address hash and um, the Hyper-V port. So basically the address hash uh, load balances outbound network traffic ac across all the active NICs that you have at the moment, uh, but only receives in inbound traffic uh, only on one network card. So this is uh, important for you to know uh, all the outbound traffic is going to be uh, load balanced but the inbound traffic will be received on the active network card or if you have multiple active network cards it will pick one network card and that traffic will go so for example if you have um, a server uh, that is really dependent on inbound and outbound traffic um, that's heavy inbound and outbound network load um, the best way to do it is uh, for you to configure the uh, static teaming and from there uh, you will have um, the option to configure the load balancing method on the switch that way the inbound and outbound traffic will be load balanced but for this method the address hash it will only uh, balance the uh, outbound traffic the other option was Hyper-V uh, port and this was uh, designed to load balance um, virtual machines. If you are running multiple virtual machines, for example, this is a Hyper-V host and so you have multiple running virtual machines, this is the preferred method of uh, load balancing. And what would it will do, it will uh, distribute, uh, distribute the uh, VM traffic across the uh, network team and each virtual machine outbound and inbound traffic will be handled by a specific active NIC. So as you can see this is a good way for you to achieve good load balance on virtual machines but, um, but um, note that uh, the when the traffic is routed from uh, for every single virtual machine um, every virtual machine is assigned to a specific NIC in the team and uh, none of the virtual machines will be able to access more bandwidth than what uh, the bandwidth on a single uh, um, network adapter is and in my case is one uh, gigabit network adapter so bear that in mind and the best way and uh, the simplest way that was added in 2012 R2 is the dynamic which includes the best of the address hash load balancing mode and the Hyper-V port. So I'm going to use this method instead. The um, third option is the standby adapter. 
and in here you have the options to choose one of the network cards to be in standby mode which means that it's not going to be used um, and it's going to be uh, activated only if the other network card fails so if you have in this case I have only two NICs but you can have multiple NICs and you can configure one NIC to be uh, on standby so if one of the other NICs fails the standby NIC will um, be activated and it will wor work um, until you replace the failed NIC. Um, you have the option to use all of the adapters so all of the adapters will be active and none of them will be into standby. So first I'm going to show you what will happen if I add a standby adapter and I'm going to select my second adapter to be a standby. The last option is the interface and you have here um, if you have a specific VLAN that is configured you can um, set here the VLAN number so that it can communicate without issues. I'm going to stick with the default, I don't have any VLANs configured. So when you click OK, it will start to uh, saving the team and uh, what it will do is if I go to, quickly enough, to the network and sharing center and open the adapter settings, I will see now that um, I have my tunics and ha I have a new NIC team um, Microsoft network adapter uh, that was created by the NIC team and uh, don't be alarmed that you, you see the network teams uh, in failed status it will need around 15-20 seconds to fully configure the switch so after everything is configured and all the network cards are added you will see that I have my configuration now. On the left side I will see the status of the NIC team and the teaming mode and load balancing methods alongside with the number of adapters. On the right side I will see which of the team, uh, the network cards is currently active and if I have standby I will see which of the network cards is a standby. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to show you if I open the properties of each network card I will see that all of the options alongside with the Internet Protocol version 4 options are deselected and the only selected option is the Microsoft uh, Network Adapter Multiplexer Protocol so this means that this physical in my case virtual but uh, the server doesn't know that uh, NIC is currently configured to report only to the virtual um, network adapter within the server uh, which is called the NIC team so if I open the properties you will see that I have all the settings that are configured normally in a normal network adapter that you have so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open the properties of the internet protocol and instead of obtaining an IP address automatically I'm going to set an IP address so I can perform some tests so I'm going to set the address to 101 I'm going to set my default gateway I'm going to set my DNS server ok I'm going to click OK so now I have my um, nick team configured up and running which is great and in here you will see that um, I have the NIC team and it's currently enabled and I can see what's the IP address of the NIC team so I'm going to switch over to my second server and let's perform some failover tests now that I'm on my second machine I'm going to log in to it going to minimize this I'm going to open a PowerShell only and I'm going to set a ping to run and I want it to be continuous ping so now you can see that I have my first server currently responding from the network team that we configured 
and when I switch over to my first machine and go ahead I'm going to simulate a fail failover for example um, of course you all know that um, bad things can happen and um, network and hardware equipment can fail so we need to be prepared in this example I'm going to right click and disable on my first network adapter which is currently the active network adapter when I disable the network adapter it will say that the team has failed and it will switch to the second one and when I switch to my second server I will see that there was a request timed out but now the ping has returned and I still have connectivity to my first machine so when I go to the uh, nick teaming settings I will see that uh, the first adapter is disabled and faulted and the second adapter became active from standby and you can see that um, for the failover in this scenario it took only one packet only what one packet was lost and uh, in most cases it won't affect the system maybe there will be a small glitch for the users for example but it's not that bad it's not that uh, if you have a single nick and it fails all the users won't be able to use the server so uh, uh, if you have to measure things I think this is the best way uh, and this is the better way so I'm going to re-enable the network switch and what will do it will do it's it's going to re-add the switch you can see that it's faulted and the connection is pending so it's going to re-add the switch and the second switch will become um, a standby switch like we configured that and if I go to the uh, let's wait for it to finish it should happen in 20-30 seconds we'll see that um, no package uh, no packages uh, should be lost but let's see if uh, this is the case so the first one is active the second one is standby let's switch to the other server you can see that uh, there are no uh, packages that were lost during this process and the final thing that I want to do is I'm going to open the properties of the nick team under the additional properties I will configure uh, all of the adapters to be active that way both adapters will be utilized they will be both active and you can see that this actually happened really fast but a thing that I need to mention to you is when you change the properties the teaming mode or um, if you want to recreate the team it will drop the connection for 30 seconds so it can recreate the team so bear that in mind if you are doing this in production during in hours you can receive a lot of angry calls um, from your colleagues and your managers so bear that in mind so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to again disable uh, my first nick and when I disable that it will say it's faulted but when I open the my second server I will see that I don't have even a single package dropped so now my second um, nick is running it's active it doesn't require for it to switch from standby to active so there is no packages lost so uh, basically this is a short explanation of what you can do with uh, with nick teaming and it's a great feature for you to protect your machines from unexpected uh, downtime so again thank you very much for viewing if you like the video you can always subscribe like it press the like button you can always comment and I will try to answer all of the questions that you have and if you don't like the video of course you can hit the um, dislike button but you can leave a comment what do you think could be done better I really appreciate um, any comments if uh, they show what could be done better so I can improve the channel in the future again thank you very much for viewing and see you soon